Los Angeles, 1998. Hey, Louis. I'll give it Too late. Businessman David Karanson is about to die because he threatened to expose a pair of deadly con artists. They are mother and son, Sante and Kenny Kimes. Sante Kimes is as dangerous a criminal as I have ever come across. Sante Kimes crosses the country, leaving a trail of insurance scams property fraud, and robbery. Sante Kimes is a grifter. Grifting is a term for the con, uh, tricking someone into taking something from them. And that was what juiced her up, was the lie, the fraud, the stealing. At Sante's side, her own son, Kenny. It's one thing for a woman to commit a crime, but to involve her children in her crimes is unconscionable, and yet she had no problem doing it. Kenny is under his mother's control. She has turned him into a criminal and a killer. When banker Saeed Bilal Ahmed inquires into Sante's suspicious bank accounts, his curiosity costs his life. Anyone who had something Sante wanted, she would go for. If she could see that she wasn't going to be able to con them out of their property, they were in the most danger, and they ended up in the morgue. New York City. 1998. Sante and her son are chasing the biggest target of their criminal career. Oh, hello. Nice to see you again. Wealthy socialite Irene Silverman. Come in. Would you like a cup of tea? Sante and Kenny pretend to be business partners looking to lease an apartment. Mrs. Silverman is in serious danger. Her new tenants are quietly plotting to take her property. And her life. Sante's a sociopath to the core. And one of the things that we see in criminal sociopaths is that their criminal behaviors cover a broader spectrum. Sociopath will have a record that includes arson, petty theft, fraud, and sometimes later in their careers, their criminal careers, we see murder. And this is what happened to her. My mother, Shante Kimes, is probably the biggest walking contradiction uh, known to man. Kent Walker is Sante Kimes' first son. She was the most fun, loving, uh, greatest person to be around. She had a charisma, a uh, love of life. I went to a party at the White House, no less. She had an ability to take any situation, turn the fun, excitement. I, of course, was life at the party, as always. Growing up, Kent remembers a glamorous mother. She aspires to the high life and models herself on Elizabeth Taylor. But Sante Kimes has another side. She was one of the most frightening people you ever want to meet. In terms of evil, I have a couple friends who are pretty high-powered attorneys, very well-renowned, who knows her, and they compared her to Charles Manson. What do you think you're doing? Serving champagne. I told you to start enjoying my speech. Does it look like I'm doing a speech? My mother would turn in an instant. Get out of my sight. Get out of my sight. I'm... She can uh, drop of a hat 
become vicious, angry, controlling, and sometimes violent. Do you think Elizabeth Taylor had to put up with this? <laughs> Her whole life was basically a lie. There would be a little germ of truth. That first germ were or seed, but then it would just blossom to this tremendous untruth. Few are safe from Sante's schemes and cons. Her housekeepers are threatened and locked up without pay. She keeps them as slaves. The fact that Santi enslaved women speaks to her sociopathy. She was a user and abuser of people to the core. In 1985, Sante is arrested for slavery. In fact, it was the only case last century where someone was convicted of slavery. By now, Kent Walker has moved out, but his younger brother, Kenny, is in a dangerous position. The, the biggest disaster in Kenny's life was when mom went to jail in the 80s for the meds trial. <laughs> at the time, Kenny was at about the worst age you can be for something like that to happen. It kind of gave Kenny a mindset that made him the perfect piece of clay to mold for my mother to, to use. As Kenny grows up, his mother grooms him to join the family business. The chances of Kenny not falling into a life of crime with his mother were slim to none. The greatest influence on his life was the person that was supposed to love him the most, his, his mother, who was a criminal to the core. sidewalk, two killers make their escape. This couple are mother and son. With Sante and Kenny Kimes, blood ties have deadly repercussions. The familial bond, especially parent to child, can be unbreakable, making it almost impossible emotionally for a child to stand up to a parent who wants them to kill. One week earlier, wealthy socialite Irene Silverman holds court. Yep, I can still do all these movements even to this day. Really? Oh, yes. Yes, I'll show you. The ex-ballet dancer is owner of her own $7 million apartment block. Her newest tenants are Sante and Kenny Kimes. Deadly con artists plotting Mrs. Silverman's downfall. Santi was dangerous to anyone that had something that she wanted. And if she sensed that that person could be manipulated, she would go for it. The pair forge property deeds, aiming to take control of Irene Silverman's apartment block. What are we going to do? 4th of July, this weekend. So? So everyone's going away on vacation. First, Mrs. Silverman has to disappear. Yes? What's the matter? Please, come in. The blood ties of mother and son make these two criminals a deadly team. Well, you're evicted, aren't we? No, we're not. No, we're not. We're not. We're not. You're staying right here. What are you? Crazy. Like he has done before, Kenny will kill on his mother's command. 
A stun gun immobilizes Irene. Get the rope. I think the sick psychodynamic between Sante and Kenny probably increased the intensity of their crimes and they fed off each other and clearly mom was the leader. She was able to take basic core good values that every mother should have for their child and twist it to justify any action she did. Science doesn't know enough about a sociopathy gene to say that he inherited this from his mother. It also could be that he learned bad behavior from her. Little boys love their mothers. They want to please them. And that is what he did as a big boy. In broad daylight, Sante and Kenny escape. Irene Silverman's body is never found. I have no doubt that Sante Kimes thought she would never be apprehended. And when that occurred, she never thought she would be convicted. One day later, the FBI arrest the Kimes on an unrelated fraud charge. In their car are all the tools of the deadly con artists. Guns, masks, rope, forged property deeds, and $30,000 in cash. Had she not been stopped, she would have been grifting and murdering until the day she died. In 2000, mother and son face an extraordinary trial. They're convicted on no less than 60 criminal counts from forgery and burglary to murder. Kenny Kimes is sentenced to 120 years in prison. Sante Kimes, 125 years. I right then had to confront myself with the fact that I then knew that my mother and my brother were murdered. And it was, in a way, a relief because I knew it was over. In a way, it was scary. I was frightened because I knew what was going to be coming. I was very saddened because I knew I'd lost my mother and my brother. Very emotional moment. 